So it's been approximately one week now since the original announcement about this unusual superconductor, potential superconductor, that seems to operate in room temperature and room pressure, LK99. And so I guess it's about that time now that we basically caught up where we are with the story, or in other words, let's do a major update of everything that has been so far discovered and not discovered, and everything we know. But just to give you a brief summary, nobody still knows if it works, but there's been a huge amount of discussion online. And so in this video, I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about the theory and how the scientists believe it might work, if it does work, that is. Talk about all of the experiments so far that seem to have been positive. Also talk about experiments that have been negative. Briefly discuss the controversy, but also briefly talk about the potential practical applications, which by the way might be the biggest disappointment. But honestly, in the last few years of making videos pretty much daily, I have never seen so much excitement and so much overwhelming interest in any kind of a scientific field until now. Basically, everyone seems to be asking questions about it, everyone wants to know what exactly superconductors are, and more importantly, a lot of students and a lot of younger children are absolutely fascinated with this topic as well. And so for me, as a science communicator and as a teacher, this is a huge win. No matter what happens with the superconductor, this is an enormous triumph. But without further ado, so what's actually going on with this LK99? First of all, now I finally know what the name stands for. Just as a reminder, this is what we actually got to see last time in the previous video, with the video showing us how this sort of acts on top of a magnet. And so L stands for Lee and K stands for Kim. But 99 apparently stands for the year when this particular superconductor was originally theoretically predicted and proposed. So apparently back in the 90s, Lee and Kim used to work for some kind of a professor they really respected. But before he passed away, they made him a promise that they're going to continue his work and create this mysterious superconductor. And so the name LK99 is a sort of a reference to their history. And turns out that originally they were trying to publish their paper in Nature back in 2020, but they got rejected. And to be honest, I'm not particularly surprised why. Their data, their writing, and the evidence they provide in their paper so far has been kind of described as patchy. It's not really that good, and even the videos they provide are not particularly very effective. For example, here's a video from just a few months ago where they tried to demonstrate how this unusual material, LK99, seems to react to a magnet when covering some kind of a copper plate. Now this might seem like it's doing something magnetic and possibly even superconducting, but the reality is that this is a really strange demonstration because they're using a copper plate. You don't need to have anything covering the copper plate because it's going to be doing this by itself. And so this actually surprised a lot of people when it was presented as potential evidence. It kind of makes no sense, it doesn't really show us anything. Other than what we already know about copper, it's conductive. On top of this, so far most demonstrations resemble diamagnetism and not superconductivity. Diamagnetism is a very common property in pretty much most materials. And in case of diamagnetism, it's essentially a repulsive magnetic force that always appears in extremely powerful magnetic fields if the atoms inside those materials contain paired electrons. Now, this might sound complicated, but in a nutshell, water is one such element. And one of the most famous examples of diamagnetism in action was the frog levitation, and by the way, frog is obviously mostly water, when the frog was placed in extremely powerful magnetic fields of approximately 16 tesla. This was actually done over two decades ago, and the frog, by the way, was totally fine. And so many materials acquire this repulsion, diamagnetic repulsion, when placed in powerful magnetic fields. And in this case, it does resemble a similar effect. So for example, you can see that this particular piece seems to be sort of moving around and vibrating. This is most likely diamagnetic in nature. Normally, if this was superconducting material, it would be actually locked. It would not be moving much, similar to what we usually observe in a lot of different simulations using supercooled materials. And so intriguingly here, you can actually turn this around, you can flip it over, you can even put this on the side, and in this case, the superconductor is always going to be at approximately the same distance away from the magnet itself. And this is normally what is referred to as the Meissner effect. It's the complete expulsion of magnetic fields from within the object, where the object starts to kind of basically levitate, but is also locked at the same distance away from the magnet. Nothing like this definitely seems to exist here. But because in this case the paper did provide basic description on how to make this material, quite a lot of teams joined in and tried to discover if it's actually real, and most importantly, if it is a superconductor. But in order to demonstrate this, several different properties have to be observed. 
So it's not just locking, which would resemble something like this, but it's also more important properties, like for example, zero resistance. Because one of the main reasons superconductors are so exciting is the fundamental property they possess because of the way electrons behave on the inside. Now, in a normal conductor, like copper, as the electric current flows inside the wire, the electrons usually bump into other atoms and interact with other electrons, and as a result, lose energy, which is then released as heat. Which is, of course, the main reason why your computer or your phone usually heats up when you start doing a lot of stuff on it. That's, of course, the main reason we have things like heat sinks and fans. But the electrons inside a superconductor seem to act differently. Here, the electrons pair up using quantum properties and thus are able to move without interacting with anything else. And specifically, they are able to avoid any kind of electrical resistance and thus do not lose energy as they move around. Which, of course, means that not only can we actually create super levitating trains, but it would also allow us to create extremely efficient fusion reactors, super efficient batteries, but more importantly, create completely new electrical grids where no energy is lost to anything. At the moment, billions of kilowatt of energy are actually lost every single hour just because the copper by itself heats up as electricity moves through it. A superconducting wire would be able to do any of this without any loss. But that's of course in that perfect future where everything seems to work fine and where we can actually physically make these superconducting wires. Unfortunately, even if this material turns out to be true and is superconducting, it's already not going to be able to do most of these things. For actually one simple reason. It's not a metal. It does seem to be a ceramic material. And that would not be super useful in most fields where superconductivity is really important. So because this is not a metal, and does not seem to become a metal even at higher temperatures, it would probably not be of much use just yet. But it could still be used for some purposes, assuming it's real. But is it? So let's discuss that as well. Let's start with the pros, I guess. Let's discuss the positive results, starting with probably the biggest one. Now the first exciting paper is by Dr. Griffin, part of the Material Science Division at the Berkeley Lab. This wonderful person is probably as qualified as it gets when it comes to talking about superconductors. And almost right away, she released her analysis discussing this in a lot of detail. But she didn't actually make anything physically. This is all pure theory. And this is actually super important because on Twitter and even in the media, this was reported as a potential proof that this is real. That is not at all what's happening here. Instead, she used a sophisticated software to try to simulate how this could possibly work, assuming that it does work. In the process of looking at potential properties that it would acquire, and determining that, in theory, this could be something that possesses some superconductivity properties, or at least unusual diamagnetism. Here she actually used the software that you see right here, that's then been used by several other teams to essentially discover something similar. And what she basically showed is that there seems to be a bit of a correlation between certain structures and certain flat bands, as they're known, which is sometimes a sign of high transition temperature superconductors. Or just to rephrase this, structurally, it sort of resembled some of the other superconductors. But she also mentions that maybe this is not superconducting, but instead is caused by exotic magnetism. Superconductivity is just one of the options. It's definitely not guaranteed. And more specifically, the simulations determined that you would need to definitely change the material quite dramatically for the material to potentially start possessing these properties. Just sort of making it the way it's made now by cooking it, literally, is very likely not going to do much. Actually, this is a really important side note. In the previous video, I mentioned that whoever discovers this is going to win the Nobel Prize. I sort of misspoke there because that's not how the Nobel is awarded. It will be awarded to the first person or the first team that's actually able to physically find a way to create this and then turn this into a superconductor. Just discovering the material is not going to be enough. But the conclusion from the study here definitely doesn't make it sound like any kind of a super material or, more specifically, a superconductor. So the theory is maybe possible, but somewhat unlikely. And so that was the first expert discussing this in more detail. But then we had a lot of other experts that actually tried to recreate this, but unfortunately their methods might have not really been very detailed or even very precise. Specifically because it was done way, way too quick. Now one of the first videos was from China, and this one went viral in China. It was actually one of the most watched videos for that particular day. And it essentially shows us a tiny, tiny speck, which seems to be that material, LK99, that seems to react to a magnet once again. You can sort of see it budge here and there occasionally, but this is just not a very good video to show us anything. 
But this first demonstration was from Hwajon University of Science and Technology, and we actually haven't heard much about this afterwards. But another Chinese professor, Professor Sun from Southeast University, later made a video that you can find in the description where he talks about measuring the resistance of this material, and it seems to have been zero resistance, basically what you would expect from a superconductor. And so here we have two separate Chinese teams claiming that they have positive results as well. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So does this mean that maybe this is real after all? Well, even on Chinese media, there's been a huge amount of skepticism. So far, most suggestions are that this was done way too quickly, there doesn't seem to be any way to reproduce their results either, and their papers are also very basic. And so far, all of the experts in the field express doubts about all of these claims. For example, in the original study, it doesn't actually show the expected drop-off to zero resistance, and also seems to show quite a lot of noise that would be very atypical for a superconductor. And quite a few additional papers literally find nothing. The first ones came out of India. In this replication attempt, first of all they confirmed the structure using X-rays, but then failed to find anything, including diamagnetism or of course levitation. As a matter of fact, nothing seems to happen in their results. Then another study, this time from China and Australia, once again confirmed the structure, but once again discovered nothing as well instead indicating that this is just a typical ceramic with potentially some magnetic effects, but nothing else unusual. And there were absolutely no signs of any superconductivity properties that were originally presented in the first paper. Now here the counter-argument coming from the original scientists was that, well yeah, you guys just didn't make it right, or that this was not a pure substance. But having looked at their techniques and also having looked at how they actually described the procedures, both the Chinese and Indian researchers did actually do a pretty good job. I mean, the original instructions involved a mortar and a pestle. This is not a very difficult procedure. And even the Korean experts that have recently established a committee to try to investigate this have already stated that they sort of disagree with both the procedure and of course the results from the original papers. Because in this case, it really doesn't explain why the magnetism even occurs, there's no demonstration of specific properties such as heat capacity or anything related to the transition temperature that's mentioned in the study. It also clearly resembles diamagnetism and not superconductivity. Not to mention that there is an additional controversy involving the authors. Apparently one of them went rogue and published one of the papers without telling the others, mostly because he basically just wanted the credit for everything. With the other authors also now claiming that the papers were actually unfinished and the procedures were not entirely complete, and that there are definitely mistakes in the original study. And so whatever happens here, it's definitely going to end up either making or destroying careers. But it obviously had at least one positive effect. It created a major buzz and major excitement about superconductivity as a field, and of course, people start asking questions about science in general. I mean, I can only expect that in a few years from now, we'll have students studying this just because they've heard about this story and they wanted to know more. And there's even a community of people that are actually trying to create this at home, and some of them have even been streaming this on Twitch, which at some point was one of the most popular streams on the platform. And so just disregarding this and basically calling this some kind of a fraud would not be fair at all. It definitely started something extraordinary. As a matter of fact, I would not be surprised that because of this, we do end up finding an actual superconductor that works in room temperatures and room conditions. And that's despite the fact that the original paper was just not well written, contained a lot of ideas that seem to be sort of controversial, and basically doesn't really explain anything about this either. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that one of these authors is going to get extremely rich from selling the movie rights about this absolutely mind-blowing, incredibly dramatic story involving what seems to be decades of research and friends becoming enemies. And yeah, that's a movie I would definitely watch. I wouldn't be surprised if it's on Netflix in approximately 5 years. Anyway, so at least for now, after one week, those are the main updates. At the moment, it still looks like this is most likely not what it was assumed to be, but it's definitely something super super exciting just because of the buzz it generated. But unfortunately, until major labs from around the world start releasing their results, including their conclusions, we're not going to know much more. Right now, there are at least 7 different labs working on this, and so chances are we're going to hear more in the next week or so. So with future updates, we'll come back and talk more about this in the video, maybe next week, maybe in 2 weeks. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, check out the previous video with even more information you might have not known, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.